So this has been a crazy week in the world of AI. And guys, in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the top stories, the top updates that you need to know, give you my thoughts on each one. So I suggest watching this entire video. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Ryan with AI Insider Tips. I appreciate you being here. And my goal here is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. So be sure to subscribe, leave me a like, leave me a comment below. And now let's get back to the top stories in AI from this past week. So the first big story to cover this week is the release of Grok 2. Now, Grok 2 is the updated version of Grok 1. This is Elon Musk's LLM or large language model that can be accessed inside the X platform. Now, you must be a member of X Premium or X Premium Plus to access this. I believe it starts at seven or eight dollars a month. That's what I'm on right now. And this is what the interface looks like. And there's a lot you can do. It's similar to Grok 1, but the biggest upgrade here, in my opinion, is the addition of AI image generation powered by Flux 1. And I'm gonna get into that here in a little bit. But Grok 2 on their press release, and I'll leave a link to this and every other article that I mention in the video description below, it talks about how there are two models being released, Grok 2 and Grok 2 Mini. Now down here, XAI, the company behind Grok 2, had a very big claim here. They said at the time of this blog post, it is outperforming both Claude 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-4 Turbo. Now, they don't mention GPT-4.0, that is the most advanced model from OpenAI, but they're saying it outperforms Claude 3 Sonnet, and I don't believe that for a second. I think Claude 3 Sonnet is still the best AI model available right now, in my opinion, after testing all these. Um, but as you'll see here, they have all these different benchmark graphs, classic benchmarks saying that their model outperforms the competition. We see this on every AI website. But when it comes to the AI image generation, this is where Grok started to blow up the internet. Now there's an account that I follow called the AI Solopreneur and he posted all of these different examples that were generated from Grok 2. And for example, like this one guys, this would never be allowed on OpenAI, so you couldn't generate this in ChatGPT, Google Gemini, Adobe Firefly, MidJourney, Stable Diffusion. All of these are very censored AI image generators. And so Grok 2 appears to be the first version or iteration of an uncensored AI image generator that we see. And they are powered by Flux 1 behind the scenes. So I have a video covering Flux 1 and you can you know, look at the website here. They're owned and operated by a company called Black Forest Labs. I'll leave a link to them in the description below as well. Um, but regardless, guys, I actually posted about this earlier today where I generated this these two images in about five seconds using Grok 2. So that one right there and that one right there. Now you may think to yourself, well, you know, those definitely look flawed. They don't look real. Well, of course, but think about the average person when they're scrolling through something on their phone and they see an image that looks like this, there's still a large percentage of the population that's going to think that's real. So very slippery, slippery slope, excuse me, that we're going down here with uncensored AI image generation with Grok 2. But regardless, I'm excited to see how the official versions of Grok 2 and Grok 2 Mini perform. Like I said, it's still in beta mode, so it's not very good yet, in my opinion, in terms of text outputs. And, you know, we're not even getting the real version of Grok 2 yet. So stay tuned for that. I'm hopefully going to make a video when the official version of Grok 2 is released compared to the existing models and go from there. Now, the second piece of AI news that I thought was important to mention is that it looks like we have a new iteration of the GPT-40 model from OpenAI. If you go to OpenAI's website, hover over products, and then click pricing under API, and you scroll down, you'll see there's a couple models here under GPT-40, more specifically this one, this GPT-40 uh, 2024-8-6. I would assume this means August 8, August 6th of 2024 is when this was created. Uh, and the reason I know this is different is number one, there's different pricing here. So on the API pricing, it's differently priced than GPT-40. Same with this uh, May 13th version. Um, and also, if I go to the Hugging Face Chatbot Arena leaderboard, this is where I look at to see what the community is voting on the best large language models available right now. You'll see here that the GPT-40 latest 2024 8-8 model, I did not mean to click that, 
8-8 model is now ranking towards the top of this LLM leaderboard. We have other versions of GPT-4.0 below this. Here's Mini. Claude 3.5 Sonnet is right here. I still personally think that Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the best model available today for several reasons. That's kind of my personal take. Um, but regardless here, you'll see here that there is a new model released of OpenAI that's an iteration of GPT-4.0. On the same topic of OpenAI, they're also partnering with more companies. And in this example, they're partnering with Indeed. So it says, Indeed uses OpenAI to deliver contextual job matching to millions of job seekers. I'm not going to read through this full thing, um, but I thought this was interesting. So this is early AI experiments in job matching. Indeed's early AI models effectively match job seekers with employers' job postings and provided brief explanations of these matches. So it's leveraging OpenAI now behind the scenes based on job descriptions of, you know, job postings that are out there and also applicants' resumes, applicants' cover letters, you know, just different details of these applicants. And they're using AI to pair the two and two together on what they believe would be good applicants for a particular role. So uh, very interesting stuff here. OpenAI is always starting to partner with these big companies for various reasons. Uh, if you come up to company here on OpenAI's website and you click news, this is where you can kind of stay updated on all these different partnerships that OpenAI is doing. Uh, Rakuten, right? There's one right there. There's, you know, all these publisher partnerships, Dot Dash Meredith, Financial Times, Atlantic Times, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just something quick that I wanted to point out there. Now, if you're a frequent user of Anthropics API or Claude, this is a pretty big piece of news, not for me in particular, but I know there are people out there who would find this useful. Um, they introduced what's called prompt caching with Claude. So this was announced two days ago on August 14th. And basically what this is, according to Anthropic, is it enables developers to cache frequently used context between API calls. And so it says right here, reducing costs up to 90% and latency up to 85% for Claude for long prompts, excuse me. Prompt caching is available today. Uh, looks like for Claude 3.5 Sonnet and Claude 3 Haiku for Claude Opus 3 Opus coming soon. And then it gives examples on when to use prompt caching. So if you're building conversational agents, coding assistance, large document processing. Um, so just a, this is a more sophisticated update from Anthropic. Um, but I believe this is a big deal. Again, if you're especially using that Anthropic API often to build apps with Anthropic uh, or whatever you're doing, I just wanted to call this out as that Claude now added prompt caching, which is reducing cost and improving latency up to 85% for long prompts. This is a pretty important quick piece of news there. So switching gears over to Google now. So Google Gemini's voice chat mode is here. So Google now announced a Gemini voice chat mode at their Pixel 9 event. I believe this was on August 13th. Yeah, so three days ago at this point. Um, but this article's from The Verge and it says, Gemini Advanced subscribers can now use Gemini Live for conversational voice chat. I believe Gemini Advanced is 15 to $20. Uh, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. I'm not a big fan of Google Gemini. I prefer Claude and ChatGPT. Um, but regardless here, this is really important because if you remember, OpenAI announced a chat feature within ChatGPT that was conversational chat. That blew up the internet for a little bit there. I believe that was their spring update when they announced that. And so Google is following suit here once again. Common trend, Google is following suit when it comes to AI behind Microsoft and OpenAI. This is a common trend I'm seeing in the AI space. Um, but regardless, it says Google's rolling out a new voice chat mode called Gemini Live. Google says the conversations can be free flowing. So you can do things like interrupt and answer mid sentence, pause the conversation and come back to it later. So they're trying to pitch it as a more humanized live chat versus what you would get using chat GPT. Uh, but you guys can read this article for more details. Just something interesting on the same topic of Google. So I'm in the SEO world. I'm sure some of you following this channel are in the SEO world. Unfortunately, Google AI overviews are now available to users who are signed out. I believe this is on incognito browsers as well. So it says you no longer need to be logged in to see AI overviews in the United States. Google confirmed this is rolled out to all US searchers. So I am not a big fan of AI overviews. This was originally called Search Generative Experience or SGE. Uh, they got a lot of negative pushback from users in both the SEO community and just general people analyzing Google search from an unbiased perspective. Search results right now, in my opinion, are some of the worst that we've ever seen for various queries and industries. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with AI overviews, this is what it looks like in real time. Uh, so in this example, if you search like, how do I turn off AI overviews, which I'm, I'm assuming they'll censor that probably, 
uh, and then it gives an AI generated answer. So again, there's more info in here. The reason I'm not a fan of AI overviews is that one, it's taking away traffic from actual websites and B, Google is scraping all the data that they have at their disposal to compile an AI generated answer on their own platform. So they're taking away traffic from everyone else, but yet they're using their data, their content on their website to spin together an AI answer from Gemini. So very unethical approach in my opinion. Uh, I hope search GPT comes to town soon and starts to give Google a little more competition in that regard. Um, but again, I thought this was at least newsworthy is that Google AI overviews is now coming to more phones and more computers near you. So the last piece of news I want to cover in this video is that we're seeing another update from Runway Gen 3. And if you're unfamiliar with Runway Gen 3, Runway is an AI text-to-video generator and you can access on their website right here to make, I believe, 5 to 10 second videos, AI generated videos from simple text prompts. Uh, it's free to use. I don't think Gen 3 is free to use, but Gen 2 is free to use. You have to pay to use Gen 3. Um, and so Runway is really coming a long way. But this update in particular is where you can take an image, upload the image, and then Runway can generate a video based on the image that you upload. So here's Runway. It says Gen 3 Turbo image to video is now available, can generate seven times faster for half the price of the original Gen 3 Alpha. So really crazy to see where this AI text to video technology is coming along. Uh, I still think that Sora is the ultimate wild card when it comes to AI video. I know Google has Vio, that's their, their AI video generator, um, but don't sleep on Runway. Runway has made a lot of updates and they know Sora is coming. So they're trying to be proactive and make as many updates as they possibly can to stay ahead of the curve when it comes to AI video. So that's it, guys. Those are some of the top stories this week in the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. I would say that Grok 2 is definitely the biggest piece of news that came out. But if I'm missing anything, please let me know in the comments. There's so much going on in the world of AI, it's easy to miss things. So be sure to comment below if there are any stories that I missed that I should check out. So again, this is Ryan with AI Insider Tips. I appreciate you being here. Give this video a like, give it a dislike if you didn't find value, subscribe to my channel, um, and most importantly, guys, I hope you all have a great day.